Did you read the part of the legislative process? The next part we are dealing with is the legislative process. Uh, how are laws made? So, uh, I don't know if anyone is online. So, the next part we, we are dealing with is how do you enact a law? How are laws made? Now, uh, the process of making laws, like you know, it's by parliament mainly. But the process, sometimes referred to as statutory um, legislation, making laws. A law can be referred to as an act of parliament or a statute. So the process of which, the process we go through to pass these laws is what we are looking at now. How do you enact these laws? We've talked about policy ideas being made into laws, but how do you do that? So. Um, the, we have to look at the first, the important terminology, the, the common terminology that is used. You have to understand it on the fingertips so that you can always understand it and explain it out to anyone. You have this in your laws. So, uh, what is an act? You have the word act. The, the act itself, what is an act? Hmm? Act is written with capital A, not small a. So an act, a law is called an act. What is an act? Yes? What's an act? Pass. Yeah. Before the law is passed, it's called the bill. After it has been passed, assented to by the president, then it becomes an act of parliament. That is why they are called acts. Uh, acts. If a, bill, if a law is passed, it's act this of of this year, that's an act. So a law made by parliament is called an act, it can also be referred to as a statute. Uh -huh. Then another common thing in legal, in legislative process is an amending act. Sometimes an act has been passed, then you want to make some changes. So you have an amending act. That amending act normally has the name of the other act with the brackets amendment. So you have the succession act, uh, chapter 262 of the laws of Uganda which has been there for a while then when you amend it, it now becomes the succession in brackets amendment act that is the amendment, the amending act so you can look at the succession act uh, of 2022 look at the succession act what does it say what, how, and how does it differ from it you will see that this is an act to amend the previous act uh, uh, an act can amend by totally cancelling the other act or it can change some provision, modify some provisions. Uh -huh, the landlord ten uh, the landlord that's an act on its own. It, it does not the land the landlord tenants act is an act on its own. It does not amend the land act. The land act was amended by the land amendment act. The land act was for nineteen was cap two to seven, I think, of nineteen ninety-eight. Then it was amended by the Land Amendment Act of 2000 something, maybe it's seven. Something. Was it also amended? Yes. Yeah. So as long as it's amended, then you find you find that it's in brackets as that is an amendment act. So that is it. So when you're reading them, you read them both together. Sometimes. It says, uh, uh, like the Children's Act, we'll say we've amended the Children's Act by adding this and this section. So it means if the Children's Act had section 1 to 20, and then this amendment has section 15A, when you're reading the Act, you read them together. So after 15, the next is section 15A. That is how the amendment acts. So that's how an amendment act is. Then the another common terminology in legislation process is the word assenting. Assent. Assent. Assent means the approval given to an act by the president. When an act has been passed by the by parliament, it has to go to the president who signs and says I've assented to it and then it 
after that. You'll see the process. If the, uh, if the president doesn't assent to it, you'll see the, pro the, the But that is the process. The president is supposed to sign off and say, I've accepted this act to, to pass. You know what a bill is, that one I want to go into it. A bill is the, before the act has been passed, the provisions, legal provisions before the act has been passed. Then you have a consolidating act. Sometimes you have two laws saying something. You have, uh, you have uh, for example, uh, the Succession Act, you have the Succession Amendment Act, then you maybe have another amendment, you have like three amendments or four amendments. Sometimes you have a consolidation act which puts all these acts together to make them one. So that makes it the new law. So you'll find that those are what they call the consolidating um, acts. So, so there are more acts that have been amended. The, the act has been amended many times or there are two or more acts about the same thing. So you consolidate, you consolidate it. You may have the customary uh, marriage Registration Act and you have the Customary Act and you want to have all these laws together and you put them together so you consolidate them into one hmm? yeah so sometimes uh, provisions may be scattered in various earlier acts you know uh, so it cancels those acts and for example uh, and I'll use where I, where I work uh, in the UPDF. In, in, in the UPDF, you have you have the UPDF Act of 2005. Then uh, they wanted to provide a law on veterans who had been taken out of service in 1992 by reduction in force. So they came up with the uh, veterans, the Uganda Veterans Assistance Board. So for it, it was providing for those veterans who dealt with that one. Now, you want to have a bill which provides for all types of veterans. Then you have the UPDF Amendment Act. But now, when you want to have one law, which you go to in case of all matters of UPDF, you will now have to have the UPDF, the Consolidated Act, which provides for those veterans, the new veterans, the sick ones, those who got lost, those who, are, you know, provides for pension. You get it. That is how it is. Right now we have many laws to govern the judiciary. You have the Judicature Act, you have the Judicial Service Commission, you have all these laws. Then you have the one which was passed in 2022, increasing uh, uh, pension and gratuity for judicial officers. So you have very many acts scattered all over. But you can have one big act which provides for the judiciary, how they behave, how they are paid, how they retire, disciplinary procedure and all that into one act instead of having many. So that is what you have, a consolidation, uh, consolidated act. The next thing to look at is delegated legislation. Under the constitution you said parliament is the one which has, the body which has the power to make laws. But sometimes laws may be made by another person or by another body. And that's what you call delegated legislation. Sometimes uh, under an act, the act can say the minister can make laws it can say a body like KCCA can come up with laws, so that is delegated legislation. There won't be acts per se, but there may be ordinances, there may be such instruments and things like that. That is what they refer to as delegated legislation. Delegation means power has been given to another person to do that. Then you have divisions. Uh, if an act of parliament is divided into parts, these parts uh, uh, can have divisions themselves, which may have sections. So you can have an Act of Parliament which is divided into two parts, Part A, Part B. Like the Pensions Act, you have Part A, then you have Part B which has the regulations. You know, so you have those divisions in the laws. Then of course enactment of an act means passing that act, making an act. The whole process means enactment of the law is making of a law. Another thing you'll come across in the process of legislative uh, uh, making uh, uh, legislative process is Hansard. Hansard refers to the recordings of what went on during parliament discussions of pass passing that act. Those are the Hansards. If you see, the first anti homosexuality law was thrown out or declared null because they failed to provide Hansards to show that it was properly discussed before 
parliament. So is the, those are the publications in which the recorded speeches or deliberations made in parliament are stored. So you'll ask on the law, on landlord and tenancy, what was the answer? The answer will show we discussed this, this is how we discussed, so and so said this, so and so said that. That's the answer. The next thing to look at in the lawmaking process is heading. Uh, heading is, these are the words at the top which are given to each section. Remember I told you, in order to have a good law, these provisions have to have proper heading. So you have to come up with a good heading for each provision. You head it and you say, section 1, rights of children. Section B, powers of the court. Section C, uh, procedure for adoption. Section C, like that. Those are the headings. The headings are the ones which appear on top of, of an act of parliament. That heading, uh, 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 th those are the, the, the titles. But the, head, the heading is the one which appears on top of the act. So the heading of the law which deals with children is the Children's Act. That is the heading of the law. It will be, there's the long heading, the law, you'll see the title. There's normally a long title. Uh, I mean the short title. So you'll see the, the heading will be Children's Act. Then the long title will be an act uh, to provide for rights of children, procedure for adoption, rights for the establishment of the family court, blah, blah, blah. That is the long title. You'll see it. Google any act, you, at the, after the first page, the second one, you'll see the long title. Any act you get. So that is the long title. The long title is, is the longer word, the longer version, or the longer name of that act. Then you have marginal notes. Uh, marginal notes, uh, it normally talks about, if you look at the act, on the side of the act, there are some words written there, those are the marginal notes. They kind of explain what that section is about. You'll Google any act, you'll see. So you'll see uh, marginal notes on the side talking about children's rights or something, or adoption, something like that. Those are the marginal notes. You have to put them in. Uh, it's a, it's, they, they are not set in the margin of an act. To uh, It's not always an at, accurate indication, but it just shows you what the matter is about. So you'll find uh, on a section they've written on, on this on the margin process for getting letters of administration, process for getting an ID. Yeah. Then you have paragraphs. Paragraphs. Those are the section. Those are the portions of each subsection. Remember, you have sections. Then you have subsections, then you can have paragraphs. These are the, the paragraphs, and they are numbered A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. Then you have parts of an act. Uh, an act can be divided into parts. You can have part A uh, uh, on, uh, for example, on, on which act? Which act can we use? Let, let's say the, uh, which act. But you can have part A saying, uh, establishment of the body. You can have part B which deals with appeals, uh, mediation and what. You can have part C which deals with costs uh, and, and all those things. You get it? So you can divide an act into parts. Yeah, so you can say part A of the act, but under the part you have the section. Remember the sections continue. So it can be from section 1 to 100, but it's divided into part, three parts. Part A has section 1 to 10, part B has section 10 to 30, part C has section 30 to 100, like that or whatever. Then you have schedules. In the acts of parliament have schedules. Schedules are, they do not form part of the act per se. They form part of the act, but they are not part of the sections of the act. The act can end on section 100, then schedules is where you have these attached things which are needed in the act. For example, under, under the registration of titles act, you have section one up to the last section, then after that you have schedule A. Schedule A talks about uh, f the form you have to fill when you're applying for a title. Schedule B has the process of how you, uh, the form of a caveat. Schedule C, you know, so it's, 
you attach things which help the act, which can't be put in the section. Remember, the act is supposed to be concerned. So the section is supposed to say, anyone who is scared that their land is going to be taken can apply for a caveat. But you can't again put a caveat. A caveat is like this and like this, you know. So the caveat is put in the schedule to the act, where you say a caveat has this form. Yeah. Then uh, sections, of course, each section of an act, each part of an act is called a section. Section one, section two, section three. You refer to a section as, uh, I mean, a, uh, a provision as a section. This of the act. Then you have the short title. The short title is the the name of a particular act. It's the short title of the act. Sorry, you say Children's Act. Then or the Children's Amendment Act. That is the short title. Then the long title will be an act to provide for children, blah, 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 like I said before. You've got it? Uh -huh. Then you've seen the word statute. Statute is just another word for the act. It's another name for act of parliament. So it can be called a statute or an act. Before, uh, we had different statutes. So you'd have children's statute. Then you have, uh, uh, you have land act. Then you have something statute, you know. But nowadays we have only acts for yeah. But we had statutes and acts before. They are all consolidated to form one uh, one provision. So we have acts of parliament. You no longer have things statute does statutes. This statute, children statute is now children act. But if you see them, you can know that this was an act of parliament. Land statute, land what? Yeah. Uh, of course, subsection. After a section is a subsection. So you say section one. If it is one, then in brackets there is one. So it is section one, subsection one. Section ten, subsection one. Then it goes to subsection one A. If it's in A. If it is there is another one down to be a I. So it will be subsection. It will be section one, sub sub section ten, subsection one A I. Hmm? So subsection is a part of a section. Yeah. Then uh, 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 I wanted you to look at the general, the general procedure for enactment of substantive legislation. So legislation is either substantive or or, le or subsidiary. The main law is the substantive law, and the other one is the subsidiary one. So look at this generally for your own research, uh, and to be in your assignment, what is the process for passing the law? You have to know it. Uh, Normally, someone comes up with the idea, cabinet uh, uh, requests for a policy approval, when the policy is approved, uh, it is given to cabinet, cabinet sits, discusses it, and passes the cabinet memo. Cabinet memo says you want to pass this law. Then uh, the cabinet memo shows the purpose of the, of, the, of the memorandum, the background of the legislation, issues for consideration by cabinet, uh, consultations that have been made, uh, you have to have consulted with the financial committee of parliament whether it is viable, uh, certain considerations, whether there is existing legislation, whether you are amending or not. Um, all these are that's what the cabinet memo comes up with. After this, the cabinet memo is presented by the sponsor uh, cabinet minister to cover with the cover to the secretary of the cabinet. It is signed. So, if the law is to do with children, the, the, the sponsoring minister may it be Minister of, of Land, Gender, Labor, and, and all that. If the law is to do with the land, the sponsoring ministry shall be the Minister of Land. If it's to do with the UPDF, it will be Minister of Defense, like that. So, that responsible minister shall uh, table that memorandum for consideration. So, after consideration of the memo, the, uh, the cabinet approval is communicated by a letter signed. And then the letter is given, the letter gives a directive uh, to prepare the legislation. So after that, they say, now go ahead and prepare that bill, or that kind of thing. So you go and uh, start preparing the bill. So this cabinet memo is important because it authorizes the sponsoring minister uh, to give instructions to start the drafting process. I mean, that's the drafting process. So. Uh, you have to make sure you cater for all those things. What does the bill want to achieve? Uh, what things should we consider? And all those things. 
Yeah. Then the bill will be presented to the legislative drafting uh, part of uh, division. Uh, and after consultations, the bill will be presented, submitted, they will seek approval of the bill, it will be laid before Parliament. Uh, you're going to read this. Parliament will discuss the bill. After Parliament has discussed the bill, they will either pass it or send it back for or reject it, pass it, or send it back for modification. Uh, if it is passed, then it will go to president, the president will then assent to it. So you saw this. An example is the anti-homosexuality law. They sat, they, everyone gives their views, the views are tabled. If something needs to be changed, it's taken back for changing, it comes back, goes back, comes back, until all the processes are done. When all that is done, there's the first reading, second reading, and third reading. After that, it now goes to the president for signing. Then the president will sign it, and that is how the law will uh, will be passed into into parliament. So read that, read that on your own. About the I've just summarized it about how it is done and how it is assented to. Uh, and by, when does the law become effective? After assenting by the president, the law has to be published in the gazette. Gazette is a national publication. Uh, where the law is put, it has to be published, and from the date of gazetting is when the law starts being effective. Yeah, that's the effective date uh, of publication. So, uh, in your own time, look at the procedure for passing subsidiary legislation. We shall consider it in the next class, but that is how I can quickly summarize the process of making laws in Uganda. This is all in your notes. So, I've covered, uh, I think, what I can. The rest of you is for you to read and we uh, consider it as um, uh, as a class later on. So for your own assignment, look at, after this, look from page 23, I think, going onwards. Look at the process of passing subsidiary legislation. Yeah, unless there are no questions, that's where I'm stopping for today. Any questions?